Hello and welcome to a visual novel called Drinking Pains. Um, this is about eating disorders, so trigger warning if you struggle with those kind of issues. Um, but um, without further ado, let's get started. Did your ceiling always look like that? Lights dance in from the bedroom window, falling in stripes across the sheets. You can feel Taylor waking next to you. He yawns, stretching his limbs to fit the corners of the bed. His skin presses against yours, sweetening its accident before he lays a kiss to your shoulder. Good morning, love. You hear feet pad across the floor as he leaves the room. Lie in bed for another hour, checking your phone. After all, you don't have anywhere to be until tonight. There's a few messages from Yuto, the best friend, and a handful of notifications from various social media. Not very if it holds your attention for long. Eventually, you pull yourself out of bed. It's harder than you remember it being. You join Taylor in the kitchen. He's at the counter making coffee, already dressed for work. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Are you sure? You're not looking great. No, I'm fine. Looks worried. His delicate features tighten their concern. He avoids your eyes. As long as you're sure. Would you like a coffee? Taylor asks, then immediately starts to make you one, leaving you little choice. You've learnt not to say no. Penny makes him suspicious. You don't want him to worry. He chatters to fill the silence as he pulls a mug from the shelf, boils the kettle, stirs in too much sugar when he thinks you're not looking. When it's ready, Taylor places it firmly on the counter in front of you. You wrap your hands around the cup to appease him. It's his favourite, the one with an obscure pop culture reference you never understand, no matter how many times he explains it. I'm looking forward to tonight. Did you remember to make the booking? Of course, Blue Ginger, your favourite. Our favourite. He laughs when he corrects you. You like his laugh. You haven't heard it in a while. What time should I get there? 7.30. There's something brittle in Taylor's smiles. He packs his lunch. Kisses you before he leaves. Slow and steady. Happy two years, my love. The house feels lonely without him. You look at your coffee. You want to drink it. Part of you cowers at the smell, the warmth, the idea of it being inside you. When you're sure Taylor won't come back, you pour it down the sink. It's nice to be here with you. Thanks for organising this. The waiter is nondescript when they slide up to your table. You haven't eaten today. You'd like to keep it that way. You sat in the kitchen for hours watching the day tick by as anxiety gripped you tight, pushed itself into your nerves and synapses. You have to do this for him. You have to try. The menu makes your hands shake, so you hide them beneath the table. Grip the skin of your legs as your stomach clenches. You're doing this for him. Taylor orders, oblivious to your turn mark. You're good at hiding in plain sight. The waiter asks you for your order. He smiles, please. You don't deserve him. He makes small talk while you wait. He tells you about work. 
You update him on you so there is an easy intimacy to your exchange which changes the moment food arrives. The conversation stutters, strains. You can't keep up. You can't stop thinking of the food in front of you. He pushes you around the tape the plate, attempt to make it appear smaller. You know you're not fooling him, but you try anyway. You stare at ta you stare at Taylor's plate. The quail carpet has ripped apart. Blood and butter coagulating beneath its nose, bones. For a long moment you wish you could be that open. He saws a piece of breast in delicately and brings it to his mouth, meat wet against his lips. You wish you were him, could lift a fork to teeth and swallow down parts of an animal, parts of anything, feel it heavy in your belly, the weight of something inside you. It makes you sick. You can't stop thinking about food, or the lack of food, or the promise of food, the smell, the feel of the fat of your thighs pressing together when you sit down, the fold where your stomach meets your legs. You'd be perfectly marbled white, red under his knife. That's it. I know he's crying. When you meet his eyes, you're surprised to see he's crying. I can't do this. He stands up from the table, grabs his bag, exits the restaurant without looking back. You're not surprised when he leaves you that night. Did your ceiling always look like that? Hey, none of us have heard from you in a while. You're okay. I'm fine. Haha, uh -huh, nice try. Gonna come over, okay? Um, I'm going to come over around 7. Does that work? If you insist. Cool. Have a good day. See you then. We wait to the sound of front door closing. Do you fall asleep again? Can't possibly be 7 already. You can hear you so yelling from the kitchen. Are you seriously still sleeping? I'm unpacking the groceries. The region swims as you get out of bed. Put your hand to the wall, wait for it to clear. You wonder if it's meant to take this long. Yuto stands at the counter. Half empty grocery bags laid out in front of him. You can see the shiny red capiscums nestled next to the pre packaged sandwiches. Another the smell of roast chicken wafts towards you, enticing and disgusting. Hey sleepyhead, how are you feeling? Actually, don't answer that, I know you're feeling like... Sorry to hear about Taylor. I know you really loved him. You don't have anything to say, so you remain quiet. It reminds you of being in the kitchen with him, voice chattering as he rummages through cupboards, his warmth in every corner of the room. You want to feel something, but you're empty. Lately, you're always empty. I know that you stop eating when you're stressed, so I bought the basic. Yuto continues, unperturbed by your silence. Fruit, veg, chicken, a little something from every food group to keep you going. Oh man, the chicken smells amazing. Do you want some now? No thanks for me earlier. Oh, okay. How much earlier is a different question. I'm gonna help myself, is that okay? You nod, it would be rude to say no. Yuto busies himself ripping open the plastic packaging before reaching into the bag with his hands. Tells you about his day as he pulls off the herb skin, sets it on a plate, updates you on mutual friends as he twists off a drumstick, a thigh, a muscle white pink greasy against his fingertips. The stomach lurches. You're not sure if it's in hunger or fear. Maybe both. All you know is that you want to be sick. Hey. Hey. Yuto looks unsettled. Half a fire's gone. 
with a spot of fat on his shirt. I'm worried about you. He says it softly, like he's half hoping you won't hear it. To reassure him that you're fine, he looks unconvinced, but changes the subject. It's been a while since everyone's seen you. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. Great, it's Maya's birthday, you should come. Where is it? At Blue Ginger, your favourite. It's like the air has been sucked out of your lungs. Panic. You watching them eat, them watching you eat, watching them watching you, watching your plate. You can't, 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 you can't. You can't, 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 you can't. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Um, I don't think that will work. What, why? I can't. Uh, sorry. Yuta's mouth twists, his hands twist, he scrapes his leftovers into the bin and leaves. You don't remember the last time your fridge was this full. You'd learnt your lesson last time you binge. Rice things coated in expired combatant. You'd be been sick for days. Is this really worth it? Did your ceiling always look like that? You spend long moments staring at the ceiling. Everything aches from your stomach to your mouth to your bones. The sheet feel like lead pressing down against you, suffocating. You can't stay here. You only remember how you got here in stolen moments. His hand against your lower back. A drink ordered for you at the bar. Hunter said he said his name was that you remember. That and the way he looked at you. Hunger in his eyes and resentment in the way he manhandled you at the bar when you exposed your neck. The lights are on but nobody's home. Hunter swims into your room. Are you a member now? He's gorgeous in the way that breeds complacency. He lights a cigarette with practice ease. Breathes in deep, lets the smoke marinate in his lungs before he exhales. Trust me to go for the weird ones. Flicks the ashes onto the sheet. He graze your calf while you flinch. He laughs, low and mocking. He stubs out the cigarette on the bed next to you. Close enough to feel the burn. Pins you down with ease. Yes, this is what you want. You don't want to think. You don't want him to find pleasure in the body you've been punishing for months. Please let it be good for something, anything. You lay back, breathe as your legs are pulled open effortlessly. You lose moments in his whiskey sour breath, the scratch of his beard. You're so helpless. I love your guineas. He whispers as he turns around to your stomach and kisses every indent between your and your vertebra. They have bruises for weeks and here is smoking again. You don't have strength to roll over. Hey, I'm going to order takeout. What do you want? I have to go. We have the room all night. What's the rush? 
I need to leave. You're so drunk and aching, but you pull yourself out of the bed. You're not sure whose clothes you grab. Yours are his, but in record time you're dressed. The sort of food scares you more than his easy kind of violence. You're in front of the fridge. Why are you in front of the fridge? You can feel demon slide down your inner thigh. You're filthy. Also, it'll weigh you down, splashing your belly. But you're drunk and you're a love that's surely. Surely. Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone. You're always tired. Sleeping is less painful than being awake. You dream of food. You wonder how much longer this can last. Time stretches, time lags, you're not sure how you got here. You don't remember getting into the car, pulling out of the driveway, and navigating the traffic lights near your home. You look down, you look up, your vision swims, your hands shake and slacken, unable to grip worn out leather. Your chest heaves, but each breath is shallow, agonizing, muscles weak, lungs weak, you're so weak. It's not the first time you've passed out at the wheel. You don't want to be here. The fridge is so cold. Your skin crawls. You want nothing to be but skin, bones, and bare essentials. your ceiling always look like that. You check your phone, no messages. You open messenger. Instead of sending one, whenever you type a word it looks fuzzy, unclear. You give up, hands fall against the covers. Phone spills into the floor. Does your ceiling always look like that? You spend a day seeing how many coins you can fit into the hollows above your collarbones. Did your ceiling always look like that? You wonder how much smaller you can get. Did your... And that's where the game ends. Thank you for watching. Um, thought this was any good please put a hit a like button and please subscribe until then i'll see you all later